Hi, Tommy. How are you? I'm all right. How are you? Well, thank you. That's good to hear. So yep. there's a lot to talk about. You have new records. Yep. Um, but before we go into the record, I'd like to jump back a little bit. And now you just mentioned you uh, flew over from London. You played the Brixton. Yep. And I saw on Instagram you posted it's kind of like uh, a long throw away from kind of that dream you had of playing in a venue like yeah. that. Yeah. So if we go back to that beginning and you've played in bands in uh, Sydney and that's where you met the guys. So, so yep. at that point, what was the ambition? Was it just fun? Um, yeah, when we first started, it was just, it was just like a little side project um, okay. that we, we weren't even meant to kind of play live gigs. It was more just a studio um, band and um, something we would do in our spare time while we were um, working on other music. Yeah. So for it to go from that to, to now, um, you know, playing venues like Brixton, um, it's definitely been a bit of a journey. And then uh, obviously you toured with Liam, but I, I saw you sh uh, showed up uh, very quickly as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we toured with Liam Gallagher and that was great. Um, and yeah, he watched our show on Friday and we got to spend some time with him after and he loved the show. And yeah, we just have similar interests in music and, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, he's a cool dude. Was that important for you, for you and, and the band because you were influenced by, by Oasis and that, that they liked what you did? Um, look, it's, it's, it's definitely a nice um, thing to happen for someone that you know, has inf influenced you musically, um, for them to kind of enjoy your music that you make too. Um, it's definitely a bonus. Um, but you know, it's not the only reason why you, sure. why you want to perform and make music, but Definitely an added bonus when, um, yeah, someone like that, one of your fellow peers, um, is a fan. So yeah. And then a couple of friends they sent me clips of that show, and then with everybody kind of belting those songs. So, yeah. so going from like you say, not really wanting to play live or not having no plans to people just just yeah. screaming your words back at you. What what is that like? Um, it's definitely a special feeling. I mean, I I hadn't really sung at all before I started this band. Um, I was a drummer. Mm. So uh, for me p personally, I guess it was to see the development of, um, you know, seeing, seeing fans sing back to you is um, it's definitely very special. And um, there's no better place to do it in, in the, in the UK with that. Cause, um, fans are definitely passionate and, um, yeah create a great, like an amazing atmosphere so I find it interesting well that I did read that you started out as a drummer and then began singing so that's well, fine you can move if you want yeah um, but in terms of the voice then because one thing that I kind of uh, which is my assessment of it is that with each album your voice has become, become a little bit more prominent a little bit more uh, yeah there, as it were, is it, is it fair to say? Yeah, definitely. I think um, I think when I first started, I I was um, just singing, you know, and um, I didn't really have my own voice and expression as much because I'd only been doing it for a few months. Right. So I guess with this new record, um, I feel like it's definitely got more of my own fingerprint on things and. Um, I definitely think I've found my voice um, over the last sort of five years or something. Right. Um, and to work with a producer like Stuart Price on this record, he um, he really helped me to bring out you know certain um, you know phrases and and certain like subtleties in my voice that I didn't really know I even kind of had. Well, it's interesting that you mentioned that because you do have uh, kind of a characteristic voice. You, you can tell that it's you when you when you hear a song. So yeah. What did he tell you about your voice, and what what? How did you view your voice kind of over the past couple of years? Um, I, look, I've always like I've never hated my voice or anything mm -hmm. like that. There's a lot of artists that like, you know, don't like their singing or are very critical on it. I've always been pretty. Um, you know, I'm not super critical of my own singing, to be honest. Okay. I've always liked the, the sound of it and the tone of it. 
um, which is important because I have to, you know, do it every day. Um, but yeah, I think just generally, um, yeah, just like enunciation and, mm. and, and kind of focusing on certain lyrics and kind of delivering certain words in, in different ways. Um, yeah, it's definitely, as you said, like the, the vocals are a bit more out the front now than what they used to be. Mm. Um, the earlier stuff was a bit kind of garagey and pushed back a little bit. Was that by design, kind of trying to hide it a little bit? Um, it's just the way that we were, where we were at as a band. Mm. Um, and, you know, I listened back to some of those early um, songs like Your Low and stuff. And, you know, I think they sound cool. Sure. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely just a time and place, you know. Um, but, you know, we never like purposely hid anything away musically. It was more just where we were at and what kind of sounds we wanted. And so now in the, let's, let's put it this way, since uh, For Now was out, then you go uh, do that touring cycle and you have that. Once that was done, uh, did you kind of have an idea where to go to for this next album, Glow? Um, the Glow? Yeah, look, we've had, we've had a, a group of songs kind of in the shortlist for, for the album or we, while we were doing kind of planning for it. And I think we all kind of felt like we should take some songs a little further mm. um, production-wise than what we've done previously. And, um, and that can be seen through, you know, tunes like Life is a Game of Changing. Sure. Um, kind of wanted to push that dancey kind of production something we've always wanted to do. And when we first started demoing early on, we've always used drum machines and electronic aspects, but um, yeah, this, this record, we, we actually wanted to kind of try to do that in a way which, you know, sounded, um, sounded good mm. and not just like, you know, using an 808 drum machine and then me singing over it, like what you often hear, so. Um, Stuart Price was really good in kind of bringing, bringing that out, turning us into a, not just a, um, a band that was trying to do dance music, but like a band that was, um, you know, encapsulating a few different genres and yeah, well, doing it tastefully as well. well was part of it, because um, obviously he was a big role in, in, in what happened, but was part of it also kind of now you're established and then you can have a little bit more leeway with what you throw in the, to the song? Um, maybe. As I said, look, we, we'd always planned on making mm. music which had dance elements. We just never had the right, um, we just didn't really have the abilities and the right sure. kind of, um, you know, uh, equipment and, and all these kind of things to, to kind of get it to where we, how we wanted it to sound. So Stuart was really helpful in that aspect. Um, brought a lot of production ideas to the table and um, yeah, I mean, as I said before, like there's no point just doing a dancey song because you know, you want to, you got, it's got to be good and it's got to fit the song and it's got to fit where you're at. And I think now is the right time. We're excited to get to um, to do more of that kind of stuff. Mm. So, in terms of the writing, then was it was it uh, like you say important to make sure that the song could stand on its own, and then you added those elements? Of course, yeah. Um, all our songs are written on acoustic guitar first, mm. and that usually is an indicator as to whether the song can can hold up. Um, and if it can, then you can pretty much do whatever you whatever you want to it um, on a production wise. Um, you can keep it stripped back or you can, you know, take it down to that kind of, you know, other avenues. But um, now we like to think all our tunes are songs. Mm. Um, I've always been quite focused on just writing, you know, um, good lyrics and good melodies and then, you know, seeing what happens after that. Right. Yeah. And we've talked about your voice. Um, when it comes to the lyrics, is that your thing or is that a collective? Uh, it's, it's, it's not so much my thing. Johnny's quite into the lyrics. Um, we do chip in here and there. We write together. Um, 
we write separately and then we come together, mm. work on songs. Um, but yeah, it's a group effort. But um, I'd have to say Johnny is probably more like lyrically minded okay. than myself. Um, but I, I gradually kind of doing more and more of, of lyric stuff. Um, and especially when I'm writing certain parts for the mm -hmm. tunes as well. Because uh, I, I can imagine when you're singing, then the, the, you mentioned the enunciation and those, those kind of things, and it has to fit a melody in a way. So yeah. Um, but when you go when you go to lyrics, then uh, like you say, you've been doing that a little bit more. Yeah. What What do you draw on? Is, is it introspective? Do you look at the world? How, how do you? I don't know how to explain it. I kind of just draw on feelings that I'm I'm having within. Okay. Um, I don't necessarily make commentary on society or mm. or other people as much, but more just how I'm feeling in a certain situation or, you know, um, how I'm feeling on the road or, you know, if I'm missing someone or if I'm not being the person that I know that I should be, things like that. Mm. Um, so yeah, I, I do kind of, kind of look t within myself for, for that kind of inspiration. Um, some of the other guys kind of draw on other people's experience t to, to get their kind of, um, their lyrics. But um, yeah, and Johnny likes to tell stories and stuff like that, but right. my lyrics are kind of a bit more um, introverted. Right. Um, at times ambiguous, I guess. But um, yeah, it's just, it's just, just what comes out, you know? Sure and like if you're, if you're at home demoing um, or just on the couch with an acoustic guitar and stuff, you kind of just, things just come out naturally. Mm. So I guess I don't try to force it and I let, let things come out naturally and see what, happens, see what sticks. But I might go like weeks and weeks without doing anything musically um, and have no real kind of inspiration um, and then one morning I might wake up or in the middle of the night I might like, wake up and all of a sudden like got lots of melodies coming out. And Can you give me an example of uh, something like that that ended up on the record? Um, the chorus for Silver. Okay. Yeah. So Silver was originally written without that, that part of mm. on, in the song. Mm. Post-chorus, chorus, whatever you want to call it. Right. Um, I always sort of felt it needed something more just to lift it to and um, just to take it to another level because it's such a special song, I think. Um, yeah, and I woke up in the middle of the night and just got my phone and, um, you know, voice memoed it in pitch black. Um, then in the morning I, I woke up and then started to kind of refine it a bit. Um, and it was um, we used as an outro in pre-production. Mm. And then we thought, oh, it kind of sounds too good. So we brought it in as a chorus. So it's so a how do I redefine all my love for you mm. part. And yeah. those little moments uh, when you're recording at the well, probably when they're, the, <laughs> they're the most special moments, right. uh, I think personally. Um, the ones that just come out mm. and you know, it's not contrived or, you know, it's not overthought. Um, it's not like you go, oh, I'm gonna pick up the guitar and go sit down by the water and write a song today. It's, for, for me, that doesn't really, doesn't really work. And if I did do that, it wouldn't, it, you could People hear could tell, it. maybe. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I think they're the most special moments in music as well, personally. Um, the things, the little things that take you by surprise. And is that, is that now, because you're now on album three, and then yeah. there's a line in uh, the glow, sick and tired of chasing uh, the glow. So yeah. th is there a balancing act between kind of keeping that uh, naivety that you had when you kind of first started yeah. out and, and not getting caught up in, in the business side of things? Yeah, for then? sure. Um, staying true to yourself, staying true to your, you, um, yourself as a band and um, remaining friends with your bandmates. Mm. Um, also staying connected with fans um, and also, yeah, just living in the moment as opposed to constantly 
trying to achieve the next mm. best thing, um, which is it is important to have goals, you know, in any career. But I also think it's important to to occasionally just stop and go, okay, mm. you've done that. That was good. Let's kind of have a drink, celebrate, whatever. <laughs> but you know, to just kind of soak it up a bit, because mm. um, you can go through, you know, a career and kind of not really take anything in and it can just pass you by so did you have the chance to do that a little bit between albums to kind of uh, sit back down and no of, i haven't okay. had a chance oh, i mean after brixton was cool okay but after that gig we kind of were like fuck you know this is <laughs> this is good like we've you know achieved something here but um but not even maybe in terms of success but just to reflect on what you've been doing for the past couple of years yeah Well, uh, uh, nah, like when I finished this record, it, it was straight into the touring side of things. So I haven't, uh, haven't really had a chance to reflect, but um, at the end of the album tour, I want to take some time to chill out, I think. <laughs> kind of, yeah, take a step back. Yeah, and that's why it's good having like, you know, um, so many photos and, and so much footage now. Because mm. you can go back and, you know, look at gigs or look at photos and stuff that, um you know just take you back there and sort of right. remind you like we i played here downstairs and i didn't even remember <laughs> till johnny showed me a photo it was like oh that's that gig and i went oh okay well is that a, a danger as well that that a lot of shows and, and it kind of becomes muddled up into the same thing and then yeah. until somebody points that out you Kind of, I guess so. Because I have that with with what I do that sometimes you can't remember who said what and. Yeah, and look, everyone can see your shows now, so it's not. In a way, it's not as special when you. I mean, live music will will always be special, but, I mean, back in the day, you'd only ever see your favorite band, um, on a poster or mm. on a film clip or, or in, you know, when you're waiting in line to. To, to watch them play um but now you know you just go on the instagram and all that stuff so uh it is it's what it is i guess um but, uh, luckily i mean if if i can tell by by the videos i've seen uh about you guys and the live shows people aren't sick of it yet so that's uh, that's a good no our, yeah we're, our fan base is is gradually getting bigger so that i mean that's good If if it starts to get gradually smaller and smaller, I think I probably should stop. <laughs> But it's because of the, like you never <laughs> plan to be uh, in music. So now that you are, is it, what is it? Uh, because you said, I do think you have ambition on on one hand, but like you say that sometimes you have to take a step back and not. not yeah. Uh, But, but how do you see kind of what you want to do? Because is it just making more records and making the best music you can? Yeah, um, I think just. I mean, it's hard to like, I mean, you got to give yourself goals and stuff like that. But I mean, I guess it's just to continue to write music that we like, like to perform um, and, you know, continue to write music, which, you know, gives us uh, pleasure. Mm. So, I mean, If you're in a band and you're not liking the music you're writing, you're not enjoying gigs, it's probably time to maybe assess things. But until then, I guess just keep making music and doing what, what we love to do. Right. Yeah. It's and hard to put like certain timelines on it. And sure. That, I, I mean, mean, yeah. I mean, I didn't, I didn't know we'd do three albums, to be honest. Um, so here, t- we, here we are and we've, we've done three and I'm really happy with it. So... So, so in the, in a sense, you take it one day at a time. You just see what uh, uh, way. In a way, in mm. a way, yeah. I mean, we've obviously got goals as far as like we want to play this fest, these festivals right. next year, and um, you know we want to um, do this tour and play here and all that. But on a on a broader scale, I guess it's just just continue to just kind of ride this the wave. I, I right. guess. And getting back to the album a little bit, because it is quite an uh, eclectic uh, collection of songs. Yeah. And well, you mentioned kind of the synthesizers and the electronic elements. Um, even even though you had planned on, on incorporating those uh, from the outset, was there any worry or doubt that, that people might um, 
have their opinions on it. Yeah, in a sense. for sure. Um, when you've created a, a band and you've released music, which is just largely, you know, rock and roll, mm. and you've, you know, your fans are, um, you know, love the, the music that you make, and then you come out with it with a dance song that's kind of like, you know, got elements of, you know, different sort of styles that are way different to, say, a garage rock album sure. like our first one. I guess there's always a little bit of worry that some fans might not like it, but uh, uh, for the people that don't like it, there's going to be people, new fans that do. Mm. And um, as much as we love our fans and they're important to us, uh, I don't think you should specifically just write music for them. I think you should write music that you want to make. And then hopefully, more often than not, that will transcend and um, people will enjoy it. So. Mm. And then, uh, well, probably my favorite is, is the opening track. This is kind of the, the Never energy. Never before. That... Yeah. So, so what was the... That's old... an old song. Okay. Yeah, see, that original drum loop was mm. done when we, you know, around before the first record. Okay. Yeah. So they're the kind of th things we, we kind of took from... Right. And then we, when we worked with Stuart, we built, up, built it up mm. and then kind of created this kind of... Um, layer of kind of sound um, and then we wrote a, a new chorus for it and stuff like that but the idea was an old idea that we kind of just gradually built up and built up over the last couple of years and then uh, uh, there are songs also that are a little bit uh, like criminals is, is a little bit more uh, that subtle was, yeah that criminals was the, the newest song on the album actually okay. it was written um, just a few weeks before we went into the studio. Okay. Um, it's one of my favorite songs. Well, the, I like the, and maybe you can talk a little bit about this because it, it, it is quite quite uh, subdued, and, and, and but then those electronic elements come in and they, they create this dynamic, so. Yeah, it's quite poppy too. Mm, sure. And, uh, you know, you can, it's also, um, for a band like us, it's, it's just as nerve wracking to make it, um, a, a dancey song than, than it is to make a, a poppy song like Criminals with those mm. kind of elements. So um, well, that uh, took a while to mix that <laughs> one. There was a few opinions going around, um, but. Um, well, let me ask this quickly then. Uh, did, because pop has, uh, for some uh, kind of music critics or whatever, it's 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 a dirty word, but that I feel pop. that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so. so well, I, I, I mean, we, yeah, but I, I think that sounds good. And I mm. think that song needed something like that in it. And um, I mean, we all love pop music. I love pop music. Um, I mean, there's elements of pop culture, obviously, that we don't like, but <laughs> there's, there's elements of, of, of pop um, music that is just like unreal. So mm. we wanted to take some of that and kind of put it into our style and um, yeah, we've done it once or twice on the album. Because one thing that I noticed, especially early on listening to the, to the album, is that it does sound like it should be played for a lot of people. I don't know if that makes sense. Which criminals? No, just, just, just the, the whole record. The, kind of, the, it, it is written in that you can see or you can imagine people chanting, like, like I said, what happened in Brixton. Yeah. You can imagine that when you're listening to, to the record. It's a, yeah, I mean... I think we were ready to make an album like that. Mm. I think it was time and as like heaps of people say, you know, songs are about like the time and the place, you know. And um, even though some of the songs were old on the record, it was the right time to record them now. Mm. And um, yeah, there are a few sing-alongs on there. That's, that's going to be good when we tour and play mm. some festivals and stuff to really see that the new songs take, take their own kind of life you know yeah. outside of the studio um which is one of my favorite things is to record write a song and then perform it and then watch how the song gradually grows on the road and how people interact with it and then you know more often than not the the, the live version of the song is is a lot different to what the recorded right. version is and and when you, uh, well, have you played those a uh, couple of new songs already? Yeah, we played um, 
Silver, Life is a Game of Changing, The Glow, and Hello Girlfriend. Okay. Yeah. And the, the, the reception, from what I can tell, has been uh, It's been good. Good, so... Yeah. Uh, Particularly I, Game of Changing, like, um, people seem to love it. People seem to love the, the techno-y, dance mm. vibe, so... Yeah, we were a bit worried that there weren't enough guitars on that track, but well, I don't think it's going to be a problem. That's a, that's a good sign then, because the, I suppose that maybe that song is uh, kind of the furthest away from, from what you've uh, yeah. shown so far. Um, there, there's one um, song that this is my second favorite, probably, uh, Learning Alive. Okay. Which, uh, and, and I, I particularly like the lyrics, but so I don't know if, if you had... Johnny wrote this okay. song. Yeah. But there's a, there's a kind of that, that uh, sentiment of never been so scared to be open and that, that kind of stuff. Knocking um, down walls through to more emptiness, yeah. Um, well, that's, I mean, that's just a real hard on your sleeve kind of tune, I sure. think. And, um, when I sing it, how I'm feeling, I, I guess it's just kind of, it's almost, you know, you have to be brave. Mm. Um, you have to take risks and, um, you know, each day you're kind of like learning new things and dealing with, with people and relationships and mm. you have to be in it together to move forward. And they're the kind of themes that I take from that song. Right. Um, I'm sure Johnny has maybe a bit more of a, personalized kind of uh, view of that tune but I think for me as a singer um, I need to kind of when I'm singing even if I didn't write the lyrics I need to kind of make it mean something mm. in my own way so I can express it to people in in the right way and so it comes across so right. that's what I that's what I think about when I'm when I'm singing that one and yeah, and kind of kind of to come f uh, f uh, full circle around that, and um, because you do have to be, uh, I suppose, as a frontman, you have to be vulnerable. You have to because you're out there, and especially with a song like this, where there's not too much going on around. Yeah, it. for sure. Um, so, so what have you learned? And we talked about your voice, but what have you learned about being a vocalist and, and being on stage and performing these songs? Um, I've learned that, like, the more you put in on stage, whether it be, I don't know, introvertedly or, or like in an expressive way, um, the more the people watching get out of it. Yeah. I think I've realized, like, I think when I first started, I kind of just used to stand there and just sing and kind of like was in my little bit of a shell. Um, I didn't really move around much. I didn't really show too much kind of emotion. and. Um, Although the, you know, the songs were beautiful and, and people would have had a good time and stuff, I feel these days when I'm performing, the more energy I give, um, the, the kind of better the, the atmosphere becomes in the venue. Mm. So, yeah, just learning like when to go for it, when to come back and, you know, just knowing when's the right time to, to kind of get the crowd involved or... Yeah, not to overdo it as well. Mm. I mean, there's nothing worse than a performer that just like overcooks it and you're just like, oh, <laughs> he's doing that again. Like, So, yeah, I guess just to, to know when to express myself a bit more and then to know when to kind of retreat and those kind of things. So fair enough. Tommy, thank you very much. Thanks for very time. much. Thank you. All right. Cool, man. That was nice. Oh, thanks. <laughs>